So guys, here it is. The final video for my top 100 Vita games. Numbers 10 to 1. Let's jump straight into the list. Number 10. Need for Speed Most Wanted. Need for Speed Most Wanted is probably my favorite racing game of all time. You've got various cars to unlock and races to compete in, as is normal for a racing game. But having an open world city to drive around and explore was just so much fun. I could happily just spend time getting into police chases or driving past speed cameras to get a higher score than my PSN friends. I found the races thrilling. Edging past the other cars to claim first place in a race was super exciting. And I loved finding new sports cars to open up new races and missions. There are so many cars and so many race events. Although I've played for so many hours already, it's another game I intend to keep on my Vita so that I can return to it again and again. Number 9. Dragon's Crown Dragon's Crown is a fantasy action game, kind of like a modern version of Golden Axe. You choose one of six warriors that all feel distinct in their playstyle, and embark on levels battling monsters, wizards and dragons. The gameplay and graphics are superb, and I love the fantasy setting. It's made by Atlas, as is Odin Sphere and Muramasa, but Dragon's Crown earns a higher spot for me than those games with its online co-op mode that lets you play with other Vita, PS3 and PS4 players, which I found added so much longevity to the game. Number 8. Rogue Legacy Rogue Legacy makes the top 10 despite the fact that I couldn't beat it. It's a brilliant 2D action platformer that felt great to play and was so addictive. The procedurally generated dungeons and random character abilities for each playthrough made each run feel different, so that I didn't get bored even after dozens of hours of playing. I also really enjoyed the pixel graphics and upgrade system, where you earn gold to unlock new abilities or stat upgrades. It's super tough, but also super fun. Number 7. Persona 4 Golden What can I say about Persona 4 Golden that hasn't already been said? It is frequently on the Vita's list of best games, and I've never spoken to anyone that didn't love it. If you don't know what it is, it's an RPG set in a Japanese town where you need to solve a series of murders with your friends. The friendships are what really make the game special. Battling in dungeons was the least interesting part of the game for me. Hanging out with the group of friends and learning more about them was the real draw. It was such a memorable game, and it's easy to see why this is often considered one of the best games on the system. I spent 70 hours playing it, and after I finished I considered restarting it straight away, just so I could spend more time in this world and develop more of the friendships. Number 6. Danganronpa I was not prepared for Danganronpa when I started it. I knew the premise of the game, students trapped in a school and forced to murder each other for their freedom. As I said in a previous video, both this and Danganronpa 2 are excellent games, but Danganronpa 1 felt more fresh, and the reveals were harder to predict than 2, which is why it's higher on my list. The characters and story were so memorable, especially the murderous teddy bear Monokuma. The only real gameplay element came in the form of the class trials, where you try and figure out the murderer. I loved how the reveals were truly shocking at times, and how the game subverted expectations again and again. I'm not a huge fan of visual novels in general, but this game was just so good. Number 5. Undertale Undertale is so unique and so impressive. It's a turn-based RPG and bullet hell game that has you control the hero as they journey back through the underworld to get home. The story is brilliant and so touching, but it's also different from pretty much every game I've ever played, for giving you the option of killing enemies or trying to resolve fights peacefully, and the decision how to handle battles can have a huge impact on the story. Every part of Undertale just works. It could be criticized for the tough battles, especially towards the end of the game, but even the moments where you struggle just spur you onwards and bolster your determination. The journey is as touching and memorable as the ending, assuming like me you try for the good ending. If you let it get its hooks in you, you'll find that it's an amazing and memorable experience. Four, Salt and Sanctuary. When I first heard about Salt and Sanctuary, the idea of a 2D Souls game on Vita was so exciting, and fortunately, it surpassed my expectations. It is very much a 2D Souls clone, 
but it's done so well that I end up being obsessed with it from the moment I started until the end credits ran. For a game like this, the controls are so important and the developers did a great job of translating the controls and feel of Dark Souls to 2D. The atmosphere and style are great too, with dark and dreary graphics and intimidating bosses that make you feel the weight of the game's difficulty. The Vita version doesn't allow online co-op, which is a shame, but even without it, it's still an excellent game. Three, SteamWorld Dig 2. Getting the jump right in a 2D platformer is so important. And fortunately, SteamWorld Dig 2 gets it just right and feels perfect to control. The fun and fluid gameplay is the best aspect of the game, but the story, art style and music complement each other perfectly to create one of the best games on the Vita. The world and different environments are a joy to explore. It's a game so enjoyable that you won't want it to end. And with all the secrets and collectibles, your playtime can be considerably extended. If you're new to the series, you should pick up and play the earlier games first. But to me, this is definitely the best game in the SteamWorld series. Two, Darkest Dungeon. I've been playing turn-based RPGs for years, but Darkest Dungeon is the most unique take on the genre. You take a team of four warriors into various dungeons to complete quests and collect loot to eventually take on the beasts in the darkest dungeon. It's difficult and unforgiving and it can be frustrating at times when things go badly but there's a great sense of achievement from just surviving a tough fight. The narration is brilliant and adds to the horror and sense of foreboding as does the sound effects. They are so realistic. It's like you can feel every slice of an enemy's claw. I finished it after 60 hours of playing but happily started it again when I bought the collector's edition, so that I could fully play through all the additional content. Number 1. Ease 8. Ease 8 just blew me away when it came out. The graphics and gameplay were superb. In my opinion, it's the best looking game on the Vita. It's such a big step up from Ease Memories of Celsita. The story was interesting and exploring the beautiful island full of monsters didn't get old. The fast paced action gameplay was my favourite aspect though. It was easy to get into and the controls were intuitive, but the game is also challenging at times, forcing me to stay on my toes. The music is also excellent. I had only played Ease Origins in the Ease series before I played this. Don't be put off by the number 8 in the title too. This isn't just a great game on the Vita, it's a great game period and a must play for Vita fans. So guys, that's my top 100 list. Thank you for watching the series and thank you for all the guys who have commented. These kinds of lists are very much personal opinion, so it's great to see the positive comments, even if you don't agree with my placement of the games. So now that the list is done, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the top 100. And what would you put in your top 10? Leave a comment below and as always, thanks for watching.